I want to highlight here is this means there's a very important relationship between marginal revenue and the elasticity of demand. So let's take our marginal revenue uh, equation and put it back in change terms. Okay, P plus delta P over delta Q times Q. Okay. Okay, and let's multiply and divide by P. Okay, so marginal revenue you can rewrite as P plus P times delta P over delta Q, delta P over delta Q times Q over P. Okay, so I just took the second term, multiplied and divided by P, the second term. Okay, I just multiplied and divided by P. The reason I did that is because that means you can rewrite this. This now starts to look like an elasticity expression. Remember the expression for elasticity? Delta, del, this looks like the inverse of an elasticity expression. Remember what elasticity of demand was? Delta Q delta P times P over Q. So that's the inverse of the elasticity of demand. So we can rewrite this as marginal revenue equals P times 1 plus 1 over the elasticity of demand. Marginal revenue equals P times 1 plus 1 over the elasticity of demand. Think about what this means for a second. Okay. What is the marginal revenue in a perfectly competitive firm? Well, how's a perfectly competitive firm? What's the elasticity of demand facing a perfectly competitive firm? Infinity, right? Perfectly elastic. So marginal revenue by L'Hopital's rule equals P. Okay? So for a perfectly competitive firm where elasticity is infinity, marginal revenue equals P. Okay? Now instead, if we took a firm that, um, where the elasticity of demand was minus 1, the elasticity of demand was minus 1, the marginal revenue would be 0. Why is that? What that says is if you're a monopolist facing an elasticity of demand of minus 1, then you make no money by selling the next unit. Because these two effects exactly cancel. With the last, it turns out with the elasticity of demand of negative 1, these two effects exactly cancel. Exactly what you make by selling one more unit is offset by how much you have to lower the price on all your previous units. So the last is you made of minus one, marginal revenue equals zero. And as you can see, as the elastic demand gets below minus one, as it approaches zero from below, as the elastic demand approaches zero from below, okay, I should have said perfect competition, I'm sorry, it was negative infinity, not infinity, negative infinity. As the elastic demand approaches zero from below, okay, then you're gonna see that the marginal revenue as it approaches zero from below, marginal revenue is going to become negative. Okay, so for example, if the elasticity of demand equals minus 0.5, then the marginal revenue equals minus p. So if this is minus 0.5, then this becomes minus 2, so marginal revenue equals minus p. You lose money. So as the elasticity of demand approaches zero, okay, you're going to lose, you're going to have a negative marginal revenue from selling the next unit. Okay, because, and why is that? With a very inelastic good, okay, you have to push the price down so much to sell the next unit that you lose money. Think about a very elastic good versus a very inelastic good. With a very elastically demanded good, okay, to sell another unit, you don't have to change the price much, right? Because you don't have to because the, cur the demand curve is very flat, so there's not much of a poisoning effect. DP DQ is small, okay, or DQ DP is big, okay. This is the inverse. So dQ dP is big with elasticity, so dP dQ is small. Okay? With a very inelastically demanded good, to sell one more unit, you're going to have to lower the price a ton, which is going to poison the revenues you get from selling that extra unit. Okay? So that's why, basically, marginal revenue will, uh, will be higher as, um, or, or will be a larger fraction of P as this elasticity, uh, as this elasticity becomes more negative.